Hi there. In this video, I wanted to provide an introduction sort of example to the matrix formulation of econometrics. So in the previous example, we talked about how we can formulate a sort of standard economic or econometric relationship. So yi given by some xi plus some sort of error ui. We could write that for containing all observations in our sample by using a matrix equation. So we, we wrote this like our vector of y observations, or n observations for y rather, is equal to our matrix of observations for x times the parameter vector beta plus u. Okay, this is all quite abstract. So I haven't specified what y is, what x is, what beta is. So the whole point of this video is I wanted to sort of flesh out with a particular example what exactly I mean by this. So the idea is that let's say there is some sort of relationship which we're interested in between let's say an individual's wages and we say that an individual's wages are determined by some sort of constant alpha plus beta 1 times let's say their level of education in years plus beta 2 times their age, right? And I've used the subscript i here in each of the particular variables which I have observations for to indicate that this is one of the i individuals within my sample. So i here is a member of the set uh, going from 1 to n. And the idea is that education and age don't determine wages perfectly. There is also some sort of idiosyncratic error for individual i. Okay, so this is just sort of writing it out in the sort of standard form which we normally use to, or we have previously used to specify econometric relationships. But I wanted to see how we would go about formulating this in a matrix equation. So the idea here is that instead of sort of writing out wage i, we can actually write out the wage for each of our n individuals, right? So if I have a random sample of wages, education, and ages, so I have observations on all three of these variables for each individual in my sample, then I can sort of write that my sort of wage of the person one is written as wage one. And then the wage of person two, I could just write that out as wage two, right? And I could sort of write this all in a sort of column vector, um, which would then be sort of going all the way through to wage of person n. Okay, so I've written it out like that form. Well, why have I done that? So that this thing here is a sort of vector of n individuals and it has only one column, so it's just an n by one vector. And the idea is that I can use this formulation to write out some sort of matrix here, which is my sort of x in this above equation here, which holds all of the observations which I need to carry out my regression. Okay, so what about the first row? What, what should that be? Well, the idea is that I multiply this matrix here by a vector. And what does this vector contain? Well, it contains just my parameters, alpha, beta 1, and beta 2. So this is just a vector of my parameters, and it has three rows and it only has one column. So this is a three by one vector. So since I've got to have the sort of dimensions matching up on both sides of this equation, then I must be multiplying this vector of parameters by an n by three matrix. Because when I multiply by an n by three matrix, what happens is, is that the inner indices of uh, the indices actually cancel with one another, and I'm just left with an n by one vector coming out of the end. So I know that I have this thing here, this sort of matrix of our observations has to be an n by three um, in size. But what about the particular entries within this matrix? So the first row, what do I need to fill in there? Well, the first row, if I just write it down, the first entry is one, the second entry is just the education level of individual one, and the third entry is the age of person one. Why is that? Well, the idea is that if I was to do matrix multiplication with this first row, then this one would be multiplying this alpha. The education level will be multiplying beta one, right? And then the age will be multiplying beta two. So actually, I've just replicated this above relationship here, but 
instead of using index i, I'm just saying this must hold for individual one, right? But the only difference is I actually have to add on at the end, we also need to have a vector of our errors because I've got an error in this above relationship. What size does this vector of errors have to be? Well, because I'm adding it, it must actually have to have the same size as our dependent variable vector. So it's just an n by one vector of my sort of disturbance terms, u1 through un, where u1 is the error for individual one and un is the error for individual n. Okay, so that we've written down the first row. What about the second row? Well, that's just easy. The first entry is one, the second entry is their level of education, and the third entry is their age. Oh, sorry, that's individual, the age of individual two rather than three. Okay, and the idea is that I would just sort of continue doing this for each of my n individuals. So my nth row would have one as its first entry, just like all the other rows, because this is sort of my constant, which I'm sort of multiplying through um, by alpha to get this alpha and this above relationship here. And then it would just have the education of individual n and the age of individual n. And sort of all rows and columns in between would follow this sort of relationship as well. So there we go. We have actually written our econometric relationship in a matrix form. So we've got sort of wages being determined by some sort of matrix of our observations, time multiplied by our parameter vector, and then finally adding on a vector of our disturbances. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we actually derive the least squared estimator using this matrix notation for econometrics. I'll see you then.